Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope this video finds you well. I hope you are happy and healthy and staying safe and washing your hands and wearing your mask. Um, for today's video, I thought it would be cool to go ahead and tell you guys the top five reasons why I personally chose Cal Poly Pomona. Um, I was doing a little bit of research just on my channel and seeing the interaction that I got in my first video, which if you haven't seen that one, it's called something like everything you need to know about Cal Poly Pomona and in terms of information about the school I feel like I pretty much covered as much as I possibly can in that video but this is kind of going to be like a part two to that because I did have some comments in there that I wanted to respond to just in a video because I feel like it might have been a little bit too long to type out and it might get confusing in the way that I word things and I feel like it's easier to just kind of do it this way but yeah, if you are interested in hearing about why I chose Cal Poly Pomona and also answering some frequently asked questions about Cal Poly Pomona, I would love to help you out. I hope this video can be of service to you guys, can help you out in your decision if you're possibly considering Cal Poly Pomona as your college. I know the date is rapidly approaching for people to commit to a school, so I would love to help you out if I can. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So reason number five as to why I chose Cal Poly Pomona as my college is location. So I have always lived in California. I was born and raised here. I grew up here and I didn't want to leave here for college. That's something I knew um, pretty much from the beginning. So I really liked the move from Northern California to Southern California because I still got the kind of going away experience. And I like that I had the chance to kind of go off and grow on my own. But at the same time, if I needed to go home for whatever reason, um, I could get there in five hours if I was driving. And I could get there in one hour if I was taking a plane. So I kind of liked the distance. Um, and I also like the fact that even though the city of Pomona itself, like it's not super safe, and it's not a place that I would tell any of you guys to hang out in. Um, I did like the fact that it was accessible, meaning, as I mentioned in my first video, it's only two hours away from San Diego. You're about 40 minutes from the beach in Orange County and, you know, Knott's Berry Farm um, and Disneyland. Um, and you're about 30 minutes from downtown LA. And you can also get to, like, Universal and, like, 40, 50 minutes. So there was definitely stuff to do. If you have a car, um, you're pretty much good to go. Like, you're not gonna be bored, basically. <laughs> so reason number four why I chose Cal Poly Pomona is the campus itself. And if you are someone who has been accepted or you're still considering it, I definitely would recommend you to go ahead and go to the campus. I know they're probably not doing tours right now because of COVID, but if you could just kind of do like a self-guided tour, um, that's something I would definitely recommend because you have to keep in mind, this is gonna be your school for four years and you want it to feel like home and you need to be able to step on campus and really picture yourself, you know, living there, studying there, kind of doing everything there um, for a while. And, you know, kind of in the beginning when I was considering going to Cal Poly Pomona, I was kind of going back and forth between um, two schools and when I actually got the chance to visit it and kind of like, you know, really be there to see it for myself instead of just seeing some photos, which I will go ahead and insert some of my photos from when I very first took a tour there, um, just in case you aren't able to go um, yourself. But once I got the chance to go, I really felt like I could see myself going there. And I went with my mom and dad, and they pretty much said the same thing. Um, you know, like I said, going back between those two schools, kind of looking back on them now, I am glad that I chose Cal Poly Pomona. It's, they had two very different feels to it, in the sense that the other school was in a much bigger city, and it was kind of more industrial. And I feel like Cal Poly Pomona, even though like some of the buildings and stuff, they're a little bit older, there is a lot of open space and it's hard to explain, but it just feels more homey. 
So if you are able to tour the campus, I would definitely recommend doing that. And that's something I would say to any of you guys for whatever college you're considering. Definitely try to go on a tour if you can't. Maybe they can do some type of virtual tour. I'm not sure if those are a thing, but yeah. Definitely consider doing that before you make your final decision. So reason number three as to why I chose Cal Poly Pomona is the diversity and the students. And this is something that I kind of experienced and witnessed from when I very first went to tour there. Like I just mentioned to you guys, when I first went to tour, I remember I was with my mom and dad and we were trying to figure out where to park because we didn't exactly know where the tour was starting just because the directions were a little bit unclear. And I remember going out to look at the map and you wouldn't believe how many people came up to me and asked me, are you lost? Can I help you find something? Do you need something? Do you need any help? And, you know, ever since that day and my four years that I was there, I can really vouch and say that everyone there is so friendly and so nice and so inviting and so welcoming. And, you know, when I went to go do my little student orientation, obviously those types of orientations can be kind of uncomfortable for some people. I'm not typically a person who has like social anxiety, but if you were that type of person, I could see how those situations can be super uncomfortable, especially because our orientation has since changed, but we were there for either two nights and three days or one night and two full days, but it's kind of like a whole big thing and you know, you're kind of kind of thrown into it and you're kind of wondering like, oh man, am I going to make friends? Um, you know, I kind of want to make friends before school starts and you know, whatever. And the friends that I had made from that orientation, I had kept like the entire four years of college. And I'm telling you, like, I don't know why, it's just something I wasn't expecting. Maybe because, like I said, it is such a big commuter school, but that's definitely a huge reason as to why I chose it. And like, I'm telling you, the people there, they're so friendly and so nice. So reason number two as to why I chose Cal Poly Pomona is because of the fact that the school is so focused on teaching its students and the students learning by doing, which means the school is so hands-on and the programs are so hands-on. And I feel like as someone who, like I've had ADHD like all my life and it's so much easier for me to learn by doing. And kind of what that looks like is like, for example, I was a hospitality major. So like I said, when I was kind of considering that other school versus Cal Poly Pomona, one big thing that kind of really swayed my opinion was the fact that I went online and I looked at the curriculum sheets for each school and they were so different. Like this other school, their hospitality program, and yes, I'm sure all of these classes are still extremely valuable. Um, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to like talk bad about any other school's program, but they were more like, you know, HR in um, hospitality, accounting in hospitality, and don't get me wrong, I took those classes too, but if you looked at Cal Poly's curriculum sheet, and this is something I would encourage all of you guys to do if you're considering Cal Poly, and whatever major you choose, go online and look at their curriculum sheets because they're they're free and you know they're posted already. And it's cool to see like what classes you can expect to take. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, I went ahead and looked at the curriculum sheet, and it's crazy just looking at the difference. You know, it's one thing to sit in class and be lectured at about accounting and managing and whatever. Cal Poly, you know, if you want to be a hotel manager, great. They have a whole program. They have a whole student-run um, hotel that you can, like, go and take the classes in and literally be a manager in, you know, for a week. And if you want to be a restaurant manager, great. They have a student-run restaurant that you can literally go in and be an actual manager in for a week. And it's just, I feel like 
it sets you up so much better for life after college than just sitting in a classroom and being lectured at. Like, it's so beneficial. And this that's not just for hospitality majors too. Like, I know the ag programs, you know, they go out and they work in like the student fields that we have and the student farm that we have. And like, they grow their own wine, they make their own beer, like, they tend to the crops on the farms that they have right there on campus. And like I said, I can't really preach this enough. I just feel like it's so beneficial and it really sets you up for life after college so much better when you learn by doing. And lastly, for the top number one reason as to why I chose Cal Poly Pomona, and that would definitely, without a doubt, be because of the... Collins College, which is the hospitality college that they have on campus. Um, it's just a really, really, really great program. It's super hands-on, like I mentioned, and it's the top program in all of California. And as someone who, of course, wanted to stay in California, you know, looking back, it really would have been silly for me to go to any other school. And I'm so glad I went to Cal Poly for that program. Um, I could do a whole separate video. <laughs> like pretty much talking all about the Collins College just because it's like, I could rave about it all day. Like it really is such a great program and they set you up so good um, for after college too. Um, and it's just so much fun. I had so much fun going to school there. Like they had barbecues and they had bonding events and they had wine classes and beer classes and we had speakers all the time coming in from different hotels and restaurants. They offered you so many internships and the career fair was amazing. Um, and like just the sense of community that they had at the Collins College, like it really was just a home away from home and I had pretty much nothing but good things to say about it. So that would definitely be the top reason as to why I chose Cal Poly Pomona. Okay, so for the second part of this video, as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and go over some of the comments that I got on my last video and answer some of these for you guys. Um, just really briefly, there's only a few, but I did want to go ahead and get around to them and answering them in this video for you. So the first one is, how is the accounting program at CPP? And I did want to answer this one because I was considering getting an accounting minor for a long time. Um, I do have one friend who I did graduate with who was an accounting major. And she already has a job. Um, the accounting classes that I did take, I will say that all the professors were very knowledgeable. All of them are a little bit older, so they have all been like CPAs for years by the time they become a professor. And like I said, they're really knowledgeable. They were also like super inviting in terms of like their office hours were always open. And if you needed, um, you know, to help with like testing and if you wanted to help or like get help with like your study materials and whatever. Um, I was in my accounting professor's office hours for, you know, a good portion of the semester and they were always super helpful and nice. So I would recommend it if you're considering becoming an accounting major, for sure. So go ahead and get into another question. Um, this person says, can you, go, can you go more in depth with the advisories? I applied for the fall of 2021 as an animal science major. But for my second major, I applied as undeclared and I would eventually work myself up. What should I look out for if I get in as an undeclared major involving the advisory? So this is again referring to my previous video where I talked about the advising and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, you guys. The advising there is terrible. If you are someone who can manage yourself and be on top of your own schedule and know what you need to do to get to where you need to be, you're going to be fine. If you're someone who needs help, I'm telling you, the advising sucks and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But if I was in your shoes, I would definitely, um, I would definitely speak with your animal science major's um, advisor. So basically how advising works is you get assigned an advisor. You don't get to choose. You get assigned one based on your last name. And it's all up to you as to when you want to meet with them. They don't automatically schedule you for anything. It's all on you. So if you're someone who can, you know, remember to meet with them and be on top of it, I would definitely meet with them, like, periodically throughout the semester. 
because they're going to be the ones who can really help you in terms of where to go for your like undeclared and it's also really important to speak with them because um, a lot of majors kind of have overlapping classes so getting like a minor or another major depending on which one it is it could be very attainable and easier than you think if you're like if the classes match up if that makes sense so like for example I was a hospitality major and I also got a marketing minor but because I already took hospitality marketing that's one less class I need to take for my marketing requirement does that make sense and I had already taken like a promotional strategies class so okay that's another class that's less that I have to take to get my marketing minor so that's something I would definitely consider doing just speak with your advisor meet up with her periodically or him periodically and um, they're gonna be the ones who can help you out in terms of um, your undeclared and I also got one more question saying how like do the minors work how do you get a minor and how do you get that process started and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to whichever department that you would like to get your minor in and you speak with them directly it has nothing to do with your major and your major in your majors advisors it has everything to do with um, the minors department so there's usually one person who's in charge of getting all the minors and this is something to watch out for again because the advisors don't tell you this you have to figure this all out on your own which is so frustrating and I wish it wasn't like this but I'm just telling you I'm being real with you that's how it is um, because usually they'll have one meeting per semester about getting a minor and I mean like I said you just kind of have to be up on like the web page and the school's web page um, to be able to know when it is because if you miss it you have to wait all the way until the next semester to apply for it um, but yeah that's just something to watch out for but that is how you get the minor started um, I think that's it for this video I think um, thank you so much for watching and if you have any more video requests I would love to hear it and I would love to film that for you but I think that's about it I'm gonna go ahead and go and I will see you in my next video bye so as promised here's some pictures of the campus and yeah like I said I took these back in 2017 so don't judge me for my looks because I feel like I've had a glow up since then um, here's the pointy building which they actually don't use anymore because it's not earthquake safe Here's a picture that I took outside of the gym. You can see there's snow on the mountains whenever it gets super cold in the winter. This is a courtyard that I always like to study at because it's super peaceful and no one ever comes here and I recommend it. This is a picture taken at the annual pumpkin festival that they have every year. It's super fun. But yeah, that is it. Thank you guys again so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.